Hey friend, welcome to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. I'm Mike McCurry, your host. I'm so thankful for the opportunity once again to speak to you today. This week on the broadcast, we are diving into some of our gospel tracts that we produce, print, and ship all over the world from right here in Odell, Illinois, at Bible Tracts Incorporated. Over the last eight years, we put out over 600 million gospel tracts, and you can get some today for free at BibleTractsInc.org. That's BibleTractsInc.org. Our theme for this week is some of our least talked about gospel tracts. You say, why would you ever have some that you don't talk about? Well, it's not that I don't talk about them. It's just relative to the rest of our inventory. These ones haven't been talked about quite enough. You see, we have about 50 different titles. They run the gamut from all sorts of situations and they're made for different circumstances. For instance, one we're going to talk about later on in the week this week is for giving to someone that's recently lost a loved one, whether it be a family member or a friend. So we have different gospel tracks that are pointed at specific situations. But there are some that, for some reason, I have not talked about enough. And so today, we're going to dive right in to a gospel track. This was one of the, this may have been the second or the third gospel track that I actually wrote. It's called Divided. You see, we live in a world that most certainly is dealing with some division. What is the biblical answer to this disunity? What is this biblical answer to all this angst and irritation? Well, let's see what I wrote a few years ago, and see if it still applies today. Now realize, of course, you can get this gospel tract at BibleTractsInc.org today. Here's what I said. Politics, religion, and race have become dividing lines that tear the fabric of our society. Now that is still true, is it not? Hatred, anger, and pride damage the foundations of our communities. This should not be. The Bible begs us by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that there be no divisions among you. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. But what does that mean for you and me, for our country and the world? You see, friend, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse number 33. In this era of division, where can we find a solution and receive true peace? Well, world peace can only begin with a single decision. When you find your peace through God. What is the Bible path to peace? Well, the Bible says that everyone, regardless of race, religion, or upbringing, has a problem. And it's a big problem. That's sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23 says. The Bible also says there's a penalty for that sin. That penalty is death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6 and verse number 23 The Bible, and this is where the good news really begins, the Bible says that this penalty has been paid. By who? By Jesus. Romans 5 and verse 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says that a person, that you and I, if we are to accept this true peace and receive it for ourselves, we must turn to the Savior and repent. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Dear friend, I I tell you today, as I did a few years ago when I wrote this gospel chapter, unfortunately, uh, race and politics, uh, these different things, they're still, they can be dividing lines, but not when Jesus Christ is the litmus test by which we divide. Because in Jesus Christ, There are no divisions, as we read in there in 1 Corinthians. Peace is possible, not through our strength, but by the grace of God. The question is, do you want that peace today? I ask you, dear friend, do you want that peace today? If you have questions about what I just read, I would love to hear from you. You can text me at 309 316 Seven two four zero. Again, that number is three zero nine three one six 
seven two four zero. Now we've talked about this gospel track called Divided, but here's another one I have in my hands right now called Proclaim Liberty. It's amazing that true peace, true, um, what's the word I'm looking for? True rightness with the world, with your world. See, here's the thing. We try to fix the entire world sometimes, but we need to start with ourselves. And to do so, we need the liberty that only comes through Christ. Here's what this gospel tract as well says. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. This biblical quote is found in Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 10. And it circles the top of the famous Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. This gospel track called Proclaim Liberty, we actually have a brand new design of it coming very, very soon. If you order today, it may be that you get the new design instead of this. We This was actually one of the first gospel tracks we designed about three years, redesigned about three years ago. And we've, we're now putting a new kind of patriotic flair on it. So you look out for those if you go to BibleTracksInc.org and order it. But continuing on, it says this, freedom is wonderful. If you don't believe that, ask the, ask the enslaved victims in other lands who suffer the cruel bondage of tyranny. Many countries have special days to honor those who suffered and died that others might enjoy liberty. The question is, what is real freedom? Dear reader, you may live in a free country, but are you really free? You can be free from the biting sting of a guilty conscience, free from the anguished torture of a haunting memory, free from the gnawing fear of certain death, free from the fearful terrors of impending judgment, free from the terrifying thoughts of eternal hell, free from the enslaving power of sin, sin that is wrecking your life, ruthlessly destroying your home and relentlessly dragging your soul into eternal damnation. You can be free, free from sin. You can have peace. You can know that your sins are all forgiven. You can be sure that if you were to die right now, you would go straight to heaven. 2 Corinthians 5.8, a verse we referenced yesterday, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Freedom, though, is in a person. Thousands have died to give us our national freedom. However, Deliverance from the power and guilt of sin is found in one man, the Lord Jesus Christ. He showed his love for you by giving his life at Calvary. He arose from the grave and is now exalted as Lord, seated at the right hand of the Father. He came, the Bible tells us, to preach deliverance to the captives and to set at, to set at liberty them that are bruised, Luke 4.18. He said, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8.32. He also said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. John 8.36. He is able to make you free. Hebrews 7.25. Wherefore, realize because Jesus lives, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. He is the only one who can solve your perplexing problems, forgive your many sins, cleanse your guilty conscience, and give you peace. Peace about living, peace about dying, and peace about eternity. He not only can, he wants to. Realize, friend, sin brings slavery. Paul speaks of those who were once the servants of sin, who are now free from sin, Romans 6, 20 through 22. When Adam sinned, he plunged the whole human race into sin. He became a sinner by sinning. The sinful nature that entered into Adam has been passed on to all of us. That means that you have a sinful nature, a wicked heart. You were born with it. This is why you sin, because you are a sinner. You are by nature a child of wrath. The heart, of course, is deceitful deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, Jeremiah tells us. And there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God is repeated again and again in Romans chapter 3. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through or in Jesus Christ our Lord, a verse we already referenced, Romans 6.23. That's why the Lord Jesus died and rose again, to pay sin's penalty for all who receive him and own him as Lord. He says to you, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, 
and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. So what's your part? Do you have to work your way there? No, friend. You must just receive him. The risen God-man, as your Lord, and trust him to forgive you and save you and set you free. One last verse. I think we've read over a dozen of them today. But John 1, 12. As many as received him, to them gave he power, or the authority, to become the sons of God. Do you want to become a son or daughter of God today? Won't you receive him now and claim your liberty? Why would you wait? Why would you put it off? Why would you be divided from real peace? Why would you persist in bondage, in captivity, in slavery? You may be listening right now and you say, you know what, Micah? I don't know him as my savior, but I want to. You know what, right now? You could word a prayer. I don't even need to give you a prayer. You can tell God that you're a sinner, that you know you're a sinner. You can't get to heaven by yourself. You know that your eternal destiny is hell, but you don't want that. You want to go to heaven. You want him to save you. You could pray a simple prayer using your own words, but meaning it in your heart. And you could change your eternal destiny. You could accept that liberty. You could stop with the divisions. We're never going to see true change, true peace in the world until we see true peace in our own hearts and lives. So I encourage you, accept it today. Christian friend, you say, you know what? I should be using gospel tracts more regularly. And I will echo that sentiment. Yes, you should. Let me encourage you. Go to BibleTracksInc.org and order some of our gospel tracks today. You can get a sample booklet to start off with. Maybe you want to know more about, in the last two days, I've only mentioned three different gospel tracks. we got 47 more to go. I'm going to talk about more later on this week. But maybe you want to see all of them right in front of you. See those gospel tracks. Read a little blurb about them. Maybe, just maybe, you'd like to start using gospel tracks more regularly. If you have a question, a comment, a critique, I'd love to hear from you. You can text me right now at 3093. One six seven two four zero. Again, that is three zero nine three one six seven two four zero. I look forward to speaking to all of you tomorrow. My prayer, as always, is that you have a great day for His glory. Make sure you join us tomorrow as we feature another gospel tract. God bless. <laughs>